Yo, everyone, we're back with another Creator Economics. Blake and I have been seeing a lot of questions and articles pop up about this topic, so we figured that we should break down a little bit around creators getting investments from VCs and other people investing in creator channels, like what you should be looking out for, what are the you know pros, what are the cons, and so Blake and I just wanted to kind of break this down for everyone. Hope this is helpful. But Blake, you know, you and I have been seeing a lot of this. We just saw an article come out probably a few weeks ago about slow ventures investing in a YouTube channel. Let's just talk through like what are the what are the pros for a creator who's now taking on an investment? Why would they do this? Yeah, I mean it's it's a good question. I think it, it comes back to even just why someone would take on investment in general, you know, like as you know, you and I both do investing on some level in, in startups. And so, you know, the first question is just always like, okay, do you believe that capital is going to accelerate your business? Uh, and do you believe that your business is going to grow faster than, you know, the capital that you burn type of thing? First and foremost, I think it's, there's, there's a question of like, uh, if you're taking on investment, uh, does that actually help your business meaningfully? Uh, you know, for a lot of YouTube channels that you and I know, that might not be the case where like giving them an, another hundred thousand dollars or even a million dollars, does that make their videos better? It's unclear. Uh, but in the context of what you referenced, uh, the, the YouTuber or the creator actually has like a business that they're hoping to build with it. And that's where I think you and I probably are very aligned and that this gets interesting in that like, if you are building something bigger, you actually can like, it, it makes sense to bring on some form of capital. Yeah, I think this is gonna happen quite a bit over the next few years because creators are figuring out how to build businesses. They are still struggling with like, how to hire around those businesses so they're not the CEO of that business they built off their YouTube channel. And so I anticipate a lot of these investments happening and a lot of them will be public. I think there is a lot of things to look out for if you're a creator taking on one of these investments because I think you and I know they're, they're so used to making every decision by themselves, not running it past anyone. There's no board, there's really no company structure. And so I think a few things that creators are really gonna need to think about is, if I'm taking investment from another person or entity, what are the expectations from that person? Because if you guys invest in a business, sometimes you're gonna take a board seat. Sometimes you have like voting rights or there's like different classifications of shares. But what's exciting to me is like creators now realizing that there is an opportunity to take on capital. They just need to, to think about like, why do I need it? Where do I need to put it? And is it really necessary for me to take this dilution into a business that I probably own a hundred percent up to this point. Yeah, I think there's there's a question of you know just alignment more than anything. In in you know when we invest in a business, there's an expectation that like everyone is going to work towards building this into a massive business. In this context, uh, trying to understand or like from both sides as a creator and as an investor what the expectations are of this return uh, is really important because. If the investor is, you know, like, oh, this is going to be, I don't know, the next Mr. Beast and whatever else, like, or if it's like, oh, we're actually just going to be a smaller YouTube channel that, you know, generates cash and uh, is like a good passive income business, but maybe isn't Mr. Beast scale. Those are all of these nuances that really will need to be worked out over time. Have you guys looked at, you know, at your, at your firm, have you guys looked at investing or even taken pitches from some YouTubers? Like, is this something that you guys are seeing more of? Yes, but it's always they're investing that they're building a business, leveraging their platform that they've built. You know, like you could yeah. argue that maybe hundred thieves is some example of this, where it is, we, we did invest in Nachot as an individual, but he opted to build something bigger than just his own personal brand. But I've also seen creators that you know have a very specific brand. Maybe it's in travel, maybe it's in education. And they're like, oh, now I'm going to build a platform to you know leverage or like use the platform that I've built to really help jumpstart their business. You're investing in an individual early on, hoping that they're going to turn into something big. And if they do, you reap the rewards. I think the issue with that is when someone really blows up, that's yeah. like one thing to avoid that I think is just inevitable is someone's going to invest in a YouTube channel early on, hoping that they have exponential growth. They're going to hit stride and they're going to be like, wow, this person paid a hundred grand for 20% of my channel, which is now probably worth millions beyond millions of dollars. Um, yep. That's when I see this getting ugly. So if you're a creator, just know that 
there's a high likelihood if you do have success that you're probably going to have this investor involved in your career for a long time. Yeah, I think it, it, it sort of rhymes with what's happened in the music industry, you know, and, you know, we, we hear about it a lot from record labels of, I don't know, basically saying like, hey, we advanced I don't know, $20 million to you and like we're going to get, you know, all of our money back you know, moving forward. We obviously hear about the extreme cases of where that deal might actually end up looking like not favorable for them. It might end up looking like a bad deal. But the reason why that deal structure exists is because they're also cutting that deal, uh, you know, 900 times with someone who didn't make it. More than anything, you should be just questioning what like value the investor is going to add. I think as, as creators think through this, they need to really set aside like, why do I need the money? Like you said earlier, where's the money going to go? Is it actually going to grow my business or is it just going to put money in my pocket that now I have to like talk to a board or someone about like setting salaries and hiring and budgeting? I think it, it it's going to provide a lot of complexity, but I'm hoping that it provides a larger amount of creators with the opportunity to just like have a chance and the capital and the means to go make videos and, and hopefully turn this into career. I think creators, you know, are entrepreneurs uh, and, you know, most of them are bootstrapped businesses, meaning they haven't taken on outside capital. It's important to understand just what that means when you take on outside capital, because you now have a burden of, I don't know, even if it's just your family giving you money, like there is a burden of like, okay, I want to make sure that they're whole. And that's very different than going on that journey individually. Uh, and so I know for myself, like taking on outside capital is stressful and that as an additional complexity, uh, even within my own business of understanding that, like for venture capital and our investors. And uh, that's a certainly carries a different weight than when it's my own personal capital. And maybe does that accidentally affect your content in some way? Because you're like, oh, now I need to be producing the content that makes the most money. There's all of these nuances that are really important for everyone to consider if they decide to take on capital in any way. Yeah, and I'd imagine the the other part of this conversation is like, what's what is Web three going to play a part in how creators raise capital or or just even get funding in general to have some kind of a token or an NFT or something that they're selling to their community who can then invest in them at an early level and it maybe pays dividends two three years from now after like that person that they believed would be big is now becoming like a star in the YouTube or Twitch or whatever space. And so I'd imagine we're gonna see more of those deals kind of come into fruition and more companies to support that. Yeah, I think it's economic alignment is just like, we've seen in crypto is really a, a force multiplier <laughs> you know like uh when when people are invested and bought in at least from a fandom side they take it to another level uh and so you can imagine in crypto and creators it gets really crazy really fast when someone actually has i don't know some sort of upside in mr beast channel they're now going to be even more of a fan of mr beast or whoever uh because they're like actually incentivized which you know gets very very crazy very quickly but again if, if you're a creator you really need to think about like the the pros of like taking on money but also like what comes with that and the expectations and, and everything that comes along with uh with raising capital taking money from someone like blake who's a vc yeah so hopefully this was helpful you know i just kind of wanted to talk through like some of the some of the nuances of this and i know you and i have been getting questions about this of like do i raise capital yeah. do i not so yeah hopefully hopefully this was a helpful episode